Thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, Brand Innovator is always fun. I've been doing this with you guys for like since the early days in 2012, so this is awesome, huge turnout. But um, I'm happy to have the pleasure of uh, working with and getting to meet you know Katie and, and Danny here. So um, I'm Eric. I'll start there. Um, I run sales at Brave. And for those of you that know us, work with us, brands that work with us, vendors, thank you. You know how important our mission is in terms of privacy for both the brands and the users of our site. Um, for those of you who don't, please use Brave, browser and search engine. Uh, global presence, we're for the users, for the people. Uh, we're trying just to make sure that everyone enters into this far less hostile world of their search and web usage of uh, you know the decentralized web. So I'll stop there, shameless plug, but Katie, Danny, I'd love for you guys to introduce yourself and what you guys are doing. Hi, everyone. Um, so I'm Katie Siegel, and I have the privilege of leading our mobile marketing team uh, for uh, B2B and B2C. So um, we're so happy to welcome you to our space today. We just launched yesterday our Galaxy S24 series. Um, so please go check out the really, really cool experiences upstairs. And I'm so happy to be here to kick things off with you all today. Hi, everyone. I'm Danny Mariano. I'm the president of Razorfish, as well as our Power of One team at Publicis called Constellation that has been um, custom built for Samsung. And I'm so excited to be here with Katie uh, to talk about our partnership. And um, again, welcome. We're very proud to be sponsoring today and helping uh, to facilitate. So I got the pleasure of speaking with, with you guys, and there's clearly a good background here, working and friendship, which is always nice. Um, so I guess we'll start there in terms of you know the shared vision, uh, Razorfish and Samsung uh, working together, the, you know, the foundation of how you guys work together, the importance of that. Um, so can you just talk about a little bit like that collaboration and how you reach you know, the user journey or the user themselves? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, I've been with Samsung for four years and have had the uh, privilege of working with Danny for most of that time. And Samsung is a really complex company. Um, I'll say that we are not the easiest uh, client. But what is so important to us is that our what's real and unique about, I think, the partnership that we have with um, Publicis is that they um, partner with us on the business. They understand our needs, how we're set up, the things that we need to deliver to be successful in the marketplace, and build marketing strategies that are going to help get us there. Both being aware of what's going on in the industry with new innovations, um, but also always being grounded in what are the objectives that we need to deliver for the company. So they know not just the how, but also the what behind it. And so that's where having that deep partnership, a partner that's going to eat, sleep, live on your business just the same way that we do, knowing our numbers, knowing that you know pre-order is going well, and so this is what we need to do, and then bringing different um, ways for us to, and pushing us to um, to bring new new innovation to the marketplace together. Yeah, and I would say it wasn't always like that it's with us and Samsung. Nope. Um, we've been uh, you know partners with Samsung for uh, I think like eighteen years, and um, when I first started nine years ago, so I've been on the uh, Samsung business for a long time, uh, we were really just channel partners, you know, and I think, you know, as we hit 2020 and there were so many dynamics going on in the marketplace, we went through what we called our digital first transformation. And that was really driven by Katie and her team of needing us to reorient around the realities of what was going on in um, the marketplace, but also the realities of the business getting more challenged. And so in that digital first transformation, it wasn't really about digital channels. It was really more about how we became more uh, consumer centric, but also got more focused on the business outcomes. And so we had to um, really rethink our strategy on how we how we operated as an agency, how we became a closer partner with Katie and her team. And that really meant a couple things. Like we created Constellation as a power of one team we literally only work on Samsung, and that allows us to have complete focus on, um, you know, 
their business and understanding it better. And I think what was really great as we went through that, we built trust and you were able to share more with us in terms of your business goals. And we focused on business outcomes versus just channel success. So, you know, it was really because you all demanded it, but then you showed up on the receiving end of making sure we had the information we needed. Yeah. I, I mean, it would be really easy. We can partner with anybody to buy our media. Exactly. Um, but we need somebody that is invested in our in our success um, the same way we are. Can I tell the story, Danny? Go ahead. Okay. So it was pretty soon after I had started at Samsung, and we were on a video conference call with our partners. And there was a fairly senior leader there that showed up with competitive earbuds. And I kind of lost it. And that was a fun phone there call. Was, there, there was a conversation with the global head of, uh, of publicists that that is not our expectation of our agency. And so um, from there, that was probably maybe one of the lower points um, where we've gone from there. I think, you know, our earbuds are now part of the onboarding um, for, for, public, for PCG employees. Message um, received. And... <laughs> <laughs> and going from there to um, to really then, because it, it's an indication, right? You care about our business, our brands, you experience our products. When you have feedback to give us, you're like, hey, you know what? This is what consumers are actually experiencing because we know that's really important. Yeah, we, um, not only is it part of our onboarding and making sure that everybody has buds um, now, but we also built out product labs. We have two flagship offices that we use to support um, our Samsung clients here in New York and also in Plano, Texas. And, um, you know, we've built out these beautiful Galaxy Labs, not as quite as nice as upstairs, but we did try to create a retail experience in our offices so that every employee on our team has the ability to play with the products and um, use the products, whether, um, and we actually go the full range, not just from the mobile experience side, so that they understand how they work together and can really have um, the ability to touch and feel and learn about the new products as they're coming out. And that was a pretty big investment for us to make. And we felt it was so important to do that so that our teams really can understand the products as consumers. Yeah. And that's so important because we're not just selling products. We need to deliver an con overall consumer experience. And that's what's really exciting with Galaxy AI. Um, it's funny. It was, we've been working on this now for months. And at first I was like, I don't know. It's this AI thing kind of overblown. I don't know. And then I got my hands on the device. And had a phone call with somebody in Korea where I could, they were instantly translating the call into English. I mean, groundbreaking that all the calls that we, we have with our, with, our, with our partners can now be made so much more seamlessly because of the, the AI features. It was like, wow. This is actually, no joke, game changing. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a skeptic, but this is, this is really bringing something new and different. And so in partnering with um, Danny and her team on how we bring those amazing features to life in a way that's, um, that makes sense to the consumer, we're really focused on the actual consumer benefit. We're not just talking about, hey, look at all these cool specs and things that our phones are so great on. It's like, no, 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 no. Here, look, you can stand on the top of a building uh, one of my uh, colleagues was at the uh, one of our partner offices, taking a picture, zooming in on the Statue of Liberty that, with the naked eye, you could barely see, but could take a high resolution photo of the Statue of Liberty. Um, those are the kinds of really cool things that help actually make and enhance our consumers' lives. So, Katie. That's a good place to go with the next question. First of all, I've had my earbud moment. Um, it was with a beverage, but I, I've been there. Um, so as far as that, what you're talking about, the way in which um, you, know, you just had kind of an eye-opening understanding of how this is going to work. Can you guys step back? And if you want, it can go with the S24 process, or if you want to talk about another recent success. But the ideation, how it starts, the where it starts, is it something that you know is from up top and you completely trickle down and how that process works. So like, how do you guys go about it together? Um, we'd love to hear about that. Yeah, so it, we, the process, we um, really start together. Um, first, grounding in what are our objectives um, to, for, for the campaign and working together with, um, with Danny and her team on 
how we bring those objectives to life. So we actually have a integrated planning process um, across not only um, uh, PCG publicists, but also our creative agencies and partners, um, our influencer teams, our PR, all come together to how we to to talk about and create the the plan for how we're going to bring um, this really amazing story to life. And so I think one of the things that is um, is unique, and I've been in a few different companies, is the um, the integration um, across our agencies being really unique. And I think part of that is um, is definitely due to um, to our friends at Publicis being part of the glue to bring that together. So um, that's where everybody has to understand every single piece. We can't do PR in a silo. We can't do influencers in a silo. It all has to be part of one um, truly integrated campaign. And I think there's some really great, um, there's some really great work that we're doing now where um, our Team Galaxy influencers are actually being coming to be part of some of our paid media integrations. Um, that's something that are like, oh, well, we used to do the influencer thing over here and we used to do the media over here. So bringing that all together is, um, is really important and I think really helping us take um, our, our marketing planning to the next level. Yeah, I think the, where we find a lot of success in building out great integrations and great programming really stems from Samsung and Katie's team ability to brief us all in the beginning and, um, you know, working on lots of different clients. I think Samsung um, in this time period has really done a great job of working with the agencies together and pretty seamlessly. So an idea can really come from anywhere. And I think we've done it every which way of, you know, bottoms up, tops down in terms of um, how we do our planning for campaigns and our annual planning together as a larger community around Samsung. But I think the common thread between all of those successes is really the idea that we're all together and that there aren't really silos um, when we think about the mobile programming and an idea from regardless of where it comes from will be executed by the appropriate agency but you would never really you we can make it pretty seamlessly and i think part of um being the fact that we're all co-located in plano actually really helps in terms of the creative agencies our team at uh, publicis samsung we're all on the same campus so it's very easy for us all to flow to and from and break down um silos and just really focus on the work. And a lot of that stems from the tone that the clients have set for us, right? Like they create that environment of safety for all of us and um, clarity on r and so that we can really focus on the great work versus all the other dynamics that can sometimes happen um, when we work with brands. And they have really good snacks. <laughs> yes, yeah, snacks are helpful. critical. But even so, I. I our, uh, our key um, client partners, we, we have security badges to their building. I should maybe tell that, everybody that, but it just <laughs> so that we can access the snacks anytime we, we need the snacks. But um, but yeah, and you know, again, it we we talk about the the partnership in a very rosy way. Danny and I we go we're we go way back, but there are lots of phone calls. Danny, I need your help, and she's like, okay, what's going on? Um, but then we dig in together and fix it. And so that's what is is really that's what really forges um, an effective uh, partnership for our team. Yeah, besides, you know, calendar issues and getting everyone, various agencies and people together. I mean, you guys obviously have a good working relationship, friendship outside of work as well. And that's amazing. Um, the best way to work together, I think. But it's not always amazing and solid and happy. Like without getting anyone in trouble. How are the challenges? Anything that takeaways for people here that are could be talked about under an NDA? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I there there's always there's always challenges. Um and I think the the important thing is just as I said having being honest in the feedback um and grounded in hey, what's what's broken? And 9 times out of 10, it's a miscommunication or a process issue. And so it's like, oh, we thought you wanted this. Oh, no, 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 no. Let's go back. Let's fix this. Let's get on the same page together. Or, oh, we were handing off, you know, this asset over here and uh, something got something got missed. Um, we had had instances. Well, uh, um, 
won't go there. But um, but the thing is that it's always it's always constructive. It's not you guys don't care about us. You guys don't care about our business. It's no, this didn't deliver against our expectations. So how do we get together and and fix it? Do we have the right staffing in place? Do we have the right team members in place? And um, make sure that on both sides, um, we're having those those really honest and candid conversations. And that's what, when you work with a team over the course of many years, that's how you really build and can get to the place where I can call Danny and say, Danny, this is not working. And we fix it. Yeah, I think it comes down to investing in the relationship um, on all the different levels. And um, when you have a foundation of trust, you can have really open and candid conversations. And a lot of times just focus on the problem on the table versus it becoming uh, any need to become defensive, but you can just really figure out how you're going to solve it. And I've always appreciated that about Katie of um, when I do get those phone calls, um, at first going through my head is like, oh, good Lord, what, what, what have I missed? What's not happening? And I would say nine times out of 10, I kind of know where this is headed. Every once in a while, she can throw me a curveball of something I wasn't aware of. And I think, you know, we had a great example gosh, it must have been in 2021, when we had some real challenges with the email program. And, you know, Katie called and said, this really is not working. And I think I installed myself in, in Plano and really just tried to understand, like, where, um, through, di like, diagnosing, like, what is the actual problem? Is it the process? Is it the people? Is it the briefing we're receiving? Like, where are um, the challenges and how are we going to fix those? And I think, you know, our commitment to make sure that we address those and show progress against those um, issues when they come in also allows us to have grace that when we're going to get a little time to fix it, as long as we're fixing it. And Katie, you and I, I mean, I feel like we were on, I think you and I were proofing emails together to make sure that we got it right, but we were both in it together to make sure that we got it on track and then set both of our teams up for success. Well, and that's what's really also important. You know, you get to a point in your career like, Oh, I shouldn't be doing this anymore. I'm too. I, I. I. This isn't. This isn't my job. No, it's all of our jobs to make sure that the work that goes out is something that we can be proud of. So, if there's one piece of advice that I can give to the folks in this room as you're coming up through your career, is that never be afraid to get roll up your sleeves and get into the weeds because that's where you find out like what's really happening and then how to really fix it. And the other thing too is like there's yes some of the the low the, the low points the problems but we've also done some really cool stuff together I mean really cool I think what's what's um, you know rolling out right now with this launch this is one of the biggest launches we've ever had um, we're investing more I think probably since I've been there. Um, but what is, uh, you know, some of the things we've done take time also. So um, we're just rolling out a partnership right now with Bloomberg Media, with the um, Optimist Guide to um, to the Earth, with uh, Nikolai Coster-Waldu, better known as Jamie Lannister, who I got to meet last night, and I tried not to embarrass myself and my company, but I might have a little bit. Um, and we started that a year ago, and that's just coming to fruition now. Um, I, was, I was driving around uh, Midtown. I see all the amazing out of home that um, the, the uh, publicist team put together for us. Um, the, um, we just did the X Games partnership. Um, we've got some really other cool things coming up that I don't know if we can talk about right now, but check out Grand Central Station in a couple weeks. Um, there's just some really awesome things that are um, that are coming through as <clears throat> as a result of the really hard work from um, the publicist team too. So it's you got to celebrate the wins. You can't just call when like when I've got and I have to remember this. Like don't just call Danny when you have something to complain about or a problem to solve. Call. We've also got to celebrate the good the good stuff together too. Absolutely. And it takes both teams to really pull that off because, um, you know, the way we've set up, the way we work is so seamless and we're really an extension of each other's team. And so we rely heavily on Katie's team to pull these things off um, as much as they rely on us to, to pull them off. And um, I think that's what makes it easier to be in the trenches together, but also to sort through like when there's challenges or issues or it gets hard. We have 
that openness to be able to just be transparent and um, you know we're always the first to take accountability for the things that we've done wrong and I've always appreciated that um, Katie and her team have always been open to feedback and to like rethinking how they approach things if we have feedback for them. Uh, it's so nice to hear that I mean <clears throat> I'm sure there's plenty of brands and clients that don't have that experience so um, you know you're both two massive entities in media technology and all the things that go along with that so Kind of a loaded question, but it's almost like you have to outdo yourself, Samsung and Publicis, each time. How do you, Samsung and Katie, like each time tap into Publicis for each of these launches, um, you know, and kind of get everyone in gear? We got to beat ourselves, you know, next for what we did last time. I mean, is it is that pressure filled? And, and I guess, so how, would, how do you tap into Publicis each time with that? And, how do you prepare yourself to do so with the help that you give? Yeah, I mean, in our industry, we all, we all, you all know, um, it's 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 tough. We just launched our new flagship device yesterday, and now it's time to start planning for the second half. And I'm like, okay, I'm a little tired right now. Uh, we just did some really amazing, great things, and we've got a dig down deep and start it all over again. We're literally, literally my team is back already working on, um, on our, on our second half, uh, plans. So it's, it is, but what is, um, also helpful is, you know, as, as we align, um, and work through our, our strategies together, then we have our team, um, at, at Publicis that then goes out to many of you and says, okay, this is what the client's looking to deliver. How are you going to help bring some new groundbreaking ideas to the table? And so it's not just us doing it in a silo. We, we are in a great position where we get to go and leverage this entire community and use your great ideas and, um, and, make, and bring those together. And then the best of the best um, get presented to us and we get to um, go through and work together to build on them, make it better, and put together um, a really cool and exciting plan. So thank you for the reminder that I'm hopping on a plane tonight to go back home to start doing exactly that. You're welcome. Send all good ideas wait, now. Wait, Katie, everyone has the best idea. How yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, I, you know, I, for us on the, on the publicist side, it really comes down to, you know, the basics. People, product and process, right? So first, on this particular um, team that we've we've built called Constellation, um, we really are very picky about who comes onto this team. And I always say we're elite athletes. We really thrive in trying to set our personal best. And one of our favorite phrases that Samsung challenges us with every launch is, never been done before. And so for a bunch of elite athletes in marketing, that's a very exciting challenge, right? So we have people who are hand chosen to really have that personality of wanting to push the barriers and be innovative in marketing and do be the first ones to do it. Um, the second is that, you know, we have inspiring products to work with. Like these are really innovative, um, also never been done before products. And now as the, you know, AI era has started uh, on the devices, we have a lot of exciting things to actually work with and um, really, you know, pushing the barrier of technology and, and the pioneers that Samsung is. So we've got great products to work with. And then finally, you know, it's the process where, um, you know, as publicists, we have access to fantastic partners. And a lot of times we have early access and betas and alphas, and we're looking for those opportunities to bring to um, Samsung because they've got the products and the desire and the drive to be first to market in a lot of those executions. So those three things allow us to keep it fresh because we know um, we've got the right people who want to play that game along with Samsung really challenging us to do it. Yeah, and many of those those partners that you know Danny mentioned, those are those are multi obviously multi year, and they're partners that same as we ask of um, our agency, we ask of our partners to also know our business, know what we are looking for, know what our problems and challenges are, and come to us with ways to solve them. So that's things like 
you know, how we, how we track, um, adoption of, um, of our devices, how we track switching rates, how we, how we track attention, retention and upgrades. And so, um, some of those, the, the partners that are, are, closest and, you know, kind of tier one, we actually have a tier, we have tiers, um, that are, that know our business, that are building, that are building capabilities for us. And that's where, um, you know, that's where really we were able to get to, um, the high performance. It's an amazing working relationship, a long one that you guys have had. So, um, obviously it works well. You guys can do a lot. I mean, you're accept, a very accepting of new, different, first, uh, and you guys want to bring that to them. I mean, any advice for everyone in the room as far as navigating a well-working relationship like, like this one? Because it's not always, you know, yep. good. It's sometimes bad, but that's okay, and you need that. So any, any words of advice for the people here? Yeah, I, th- I think like just in any working relationship, um, you – need to be grounded in the, um, in, in what it, in, in the what, what is it that we're trying to, um, achieve? What is it that we're trying to do here? And when there's things that go awry, it's, uh, assume positive intent, what's, what's broken and how to fix it. Mistakes will be made. Mistakes will always be made. Um, but it's how we, how we repair, um, things going forward. And if you're grounded in, the fundamental, what is it that we're trying to do that helps give the, um, the perspective of, okay, how we go therefore and fix it and being willing on both sides to understand what that is. Because if, if there's not, if Danny was like, yeah, you know what? I I don't really think we are going to need to do things that way. I'm like, well, that's just not going to work out for us long term then. So, um, so it's 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 really it's really kind of stepping back, looking at as Danny said, the people, the processes, and bringing things to um, to light, and being willing to have those really candid conversations. And again, you know, as we talk about things like that are like NVDB never been done before. Um, just because something has never been done before doesn't mean we should do it. And so it's like, don't, please don't just come and be like, hey, this is brand new to the industry and we should try this because blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, does it deliver against our objectives? Does it have measurable, measurable KPIs? Does it have a positive ROAS? Are CPMs um, in line? All those things also matter. So please don't take away like, okay, I'm just going to go create some yeah. really cool groundbreaking new things because it all has to come back and be grounded in the objectives. Yeah, I feel like the advice I give um, most to my team is like first, like build a relationship based on trust and transparency because that's where, um, you know, relationships are real and authentic. And um, that's hard sometimes from the agency perspective, but I think if we focus on, you know, really thinking about how that um, relationship dynamic works and building those personal connections. And then the other advice in kind of rule we have is like focus on your client's business. What are they trying to accomplish? If you keep that at the front and center of what we're trying, like why we're all here and what we're trying to do in terms of supporting the business and our clients, um, we can never go wrong if we're thinking about the client's business outcomes. And that allows us to, um, those two things together allow us to really have um, kind of open dialogue that allows us to push forward and through issues, um, but also be um, very innovative together. That's a good point. I don't, not to put you on the spot, both of you, but don't, don't you ever get clouded by what the competitive set is doing? And how do you do what you do all the time when there's so much stuff around us that, you know, may make you upset or nervous or, you know, how do you, how do you navigate that when your, your focus is exactly what you were just saying, client first? Well, for us, I think it's, um, you know, like, like, of course, it's a big competitive field. Uh, Samsung definitely has, they have a lot of competitors. They play in a lot of categories. And while we're mindful of them, um, Samsung is, you know, an enormous global brand force in the world. And so um, while we want to be mindful of what competitors are doing and what's going on in the landscape, and there is a lot to track, we also are always thinking ahead, like Katie said, we're already all kicking off uh, the next launch. So, um, you know, it... It's easy to get distracted, but if we focus again on what we're all trying to accomplish, we can take it into account without letting it um, get in our way. Yeah, I I think with anything, um, right? We we always do competitive 
research. We're always, we're always, you know, analyzing what's going on in the marketplace. But with anything, it's like, play your game. If you're focused, and we believe in our strategies, we believe that they're right, we're doing the right things for the business, then we don't, we, we don't deviate, you know, play your game, right? Don't, don't be, don't be looking where the other ball, where, you know, where the other ball is, like, play the, play the ball that's on your field. Simple, but really important. I know this is great. 0, 0.00 time. We did it. We're good at this. I was like deep third wheel here, but you guys are awesome. And I love, I love your uh, relationship that you guys have. It seems pretty unbelievable. Sorry about that, Eric. I was prepared. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everyone. Thank you so much. <laughs>